What's up guys, it's finally time for a new tea list video. I actually haven't made one in a while, so after playing the patch for a bit, I think I have a good estimate on how you know things are looking like. Of course, not still, there's still so many things you have to discover, but I think you guys were waiting for a tier list, so I thought let's just go ahead. Again, starting with the lane tier list. Disclaimer, lane tier list doesn't mean how strong a Pokemon is from level 1 to level 6 in lane. It measures how strong a Pokemon is across the entire game when picked on top or bot lane, all right? Just so uh, we're on the same page, because I think that's something a lot of people don't understand always. And uh, I just think on how on average a Pokemon performs across hundreds of games played in lane across the entire match. That's how I kind of measure these kind of things. So yeah, let's start with the Absol. Absol is absolutely terrible right now. Um, I still think it can carry games, but man, they just gutted up so like crazy. It has a game-breaking buck as well. The second Night Switch just never hits. So it's very hard for me to rank this Pokemon. I still picked it like two or three times and I still kind of won games with it. But it was like one of the most frustrating experience I had in a long time due to my second Night Switch not hitting. Um, I think I can still carry games, so I'm going to put it up here. I don't know, um, I think it's fine. Um, Blastoise, I think, is still solid 8 here Pokemon. I think the emblems don't do too much for him. So far, I've like, found nothing where I'm like, wow, this is so insane on Blastoise. But I still think he's very solid of a Pokemon with Water Sport Rapid Spin. Doesn't matter what, can always be picked, can always be, uh, you know, a threat to deal with. Still annoying for a lot of Pokemon. Even after the nerfs, Blissey, still S tier Pokemon. Or, I mean, maybe A plus now, but nah. Like, Every time the enemies have, have a Blissey and I don't have a Blissey in my team, I already know this game is going to be way too difficult. Every single time. Blissey healing bit didn't get touched. The Unite move is absolutely insane and game-changing as well still. Every time there's a Blissey enemy team, I just know that my chance of winning already dropped pretty, pretty low. Charizard, I'm going to put in C+, here. Terrible for laning phase. Um, that has no last hitting, right? You can cheese it as always, as I I made, I made a video on Charizard before and how you can maybe lane with Charizard, but in general, I would not recommend it. Uh, Cinder A is still absolutely the worst laner in the game. Of course, again, over across the entire game, a late game Cinder in, in lane can farm up, right? But I think on average, by like there's so many games, we would just do nothing for the entire match. And uh, yeah, I think it's just terrible. Cromorant is absolutely insane right now. I'm just going to put him actually into... I think I'm A plus tier, maybe. Maybe it's A plus tier. I think ST is just very good, but A plus in lane. I think he's going to be ST in jungle, but uh, in lane, I think he's a solid A plus now. Cooldown reduction bit is insane. And again, last time I also underestimated him a bit. I think he's very, very good. And I absolutely love playing Kramer Rand right now. Crusher, I think, is a solid B plus. I think as soon as people when people get more crit chance emblems, he's going to be even better. Like, Crusher is one of those Pokemon where I'm just waiting to have 10% crit for my emblems. And I'm just gonna start rolling over games like it's nothing. It's gonna be absolutely hilarious. So I hope you guys are ready for it. But it's gonna take a bit still. Can't promise anything yet. I still need more crit chance emblems. Edegos, I think, is super, super good of a Pokemon as well still. Again, we have Blissey. But Edegos is very mean of a Pokemon. I think it's very, very strong. Also, emblems are fine on it. We have Kuren Reduction, which is very good on Edegos. I think attack speed a bit can also be very good. Or crit chance, actually. 10% uh, crit on Edegos and just auto attack a lot can also work, honestly, with a scope lens. Not even joking, if you get to 16 or 18% crit, you can do low damage, right? Could be very annoying. Garchomp, I really don't like Garchomp right now. It doesn't matter what, I just dislike this Pokemon, but I think he's still fine. I think BT is very solid for him. He's just very, like, I think B is still below average. So, like, I mean, right now he is, like, the average, right? So, so he's just a bit below average, and I just can't really be a fan of him too much. Gengar, I mean, people hate on me for putting Gengar lane into a higher tier, but uh, he is very good in lane. I mean, it's it's difficult to play, but as soon as you get to level 5, you can take over games. He's one of those Pokemon that is perfect for solo queue, and he can always shine later on. The comparison like between like someone like Cinder Ace and Gengar is Gengar can stay as better last hitting than Cinder Ace. And Gengar is a Pokemon, even if he falls a bit behind in lane, he can always come back by just Unite moving, one-shotting the enemy highest level, he will always gain experience. Doesn't matter what, you really can't stop it. Like, Gengar is just prone to snowball a game, even if he's a bit behind, because he can always just be like, I'm just going to kill one of these with my Unite move, and that's it. You know, you're just going to kill the enemy jungler very fast, going to get some experience, and he always gets back into games. Very, very easily. Laying God of War... Nothing too crazy. I'm gonna put it into B. I really, I think literally Lane Gengar has more chance of winning a game than Lane Gardevoir, um, unironically. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Lane Gardevoir right now. Even though I love playing Gardevoir, I just don't think it's it currently. I think Greedent is still very strong. Eight, a plus or A tier? Probably A plus tier still. Um, I think HP 
you know, emblems can also make him very, very tanky, annoying to deal with. I think there's already some people playing Cookie with uh, HP emblems, and they're just impossible to take down. But even if you play normal, even without emblems, Green was still an absolutely power pick, and is still very strong and annoying to deal with. This squirrel just doesn't disappear. We didn't join lane. Uh, C+. Plus. Terrible, similar to like Shavizat and Cinder Ace. I just think it's just a bit better than Cinder Ace. And that's about it. Just a bit better than Cinder Ace. Lucario. Um, I'm going to actually put him to A plus tier. I think it's the first time I'm not going to put him to S tier. He's still absolutely ridiculous. Doesn't matter if you go Power Punch or Extreme Speed. But I think he doesn't really have too much impact from when it comes to the emblems as well. Um, but I think I think I think A plus is solid. I just I just currently prefer Machamp and Serena, if I'm being honest. So those are currently the two Pokemons I personally prefer over Lucario, but he's still very strong. So talking about Machamp, Machamp is absolutely insane. I think this Pokemon probably deserves a nerf. The crit rate emblems are also gonna make him even better. And he's an absolute monster. Mamoswine. Mamoswine is like a weird Pokemon. I don't think he's as bad, but I think he's just he's just like the absolute average of average as you can be. That's Mamoswine. So I think B plus is fair for him. I'd rather still have a Mamoswine than maybe one of these Pokemon, but I'm not even sure. Like planning like <laughs> placing these Pokemons can be quite difficult, right? It can be quite, quite difficult. Then we have Mr. Mime. I think Mr. Mime is Mr. Mime is also hard to rank, but um I think people really underestimate this Pokemon. I think he's still quite strong. The emblems are okay on him. We can have Kudan Reduction, which means we can have more confusions. Nothing too game-breaking, but still quite solid as well. Nine Tails, solid eight here, still Pokemon. Doesn't matter if you play Veil vale or Blizzard Avalanche, absolutely fine. Same for Pikachu. This is like the, the I feel like I always put these two together in the same tier. Pikachu also very good. Doesn't matter if you play Void Tackle, long range, very, very strong Pokemon. Um still I think A. I mean AT again, AT means good. AT means strong, right? So slow bro. I think it's currently S tier. Man, Skull is so annoying to play against. It's so strong. It does so much damage. Is it enough for S tier? I think it might be. I think it might be finally time we're putting Slowbro back into the S tier. And it's just... This Pokemon is so hard to deal with. An insanely strong laning phase if you get to level 4. You bully out so many Pokemon. Also very good in the meta. We have a lot of, we have a lot of physical attackers. So, yeah. My champ is very, very mean right now, I would say. Snorlax, solid B plus tier. I think he is totally fine to pick right now. You can if you want to play something a bit tankier, something off a CC similar to Mama Swine. I think they're pretty similar when it comes to power. Even though I think I prefer Snorlax. I think I prefer Snorlax over Mama Swine. But yeah, personal preference, I would say. But Snorlax might just be a tiny bit better still. Savion, solid A plus tier, in my opinion. I think it's better than these two. Because um, Savion also makes a bit more use out of these emblems. Cooldown reduction. I mean, Pikachu as well. Having lower cooldown wood tackle is amazing. Um, for 9 hits, it's okay. Um, I'm still also waiting for 10% crit chance. If I get 10% crit chance, I'm going to play 16 or 18% Aurora Veil 9 tails, and it's going to be absolutely blast. So again, guys, just pray for me that I get golden crit rate emblems, all right? That's all I want you guys to do. Tallow Flame in lane. Absolutely hate it. Um, I think it's terrible, but it's probably not this terrible. Still pretty terrible, but I'm going to just put it into this tier. These are just like, okay. Let's go into B tier. I guess I still rather have a lane Talon Flame than decent lane, cause just because he has a bit more early game damage. And yeah, Venusaur, Venusaur, solid A plus I would say with the emblems as well. Has even more Claw Quidon on his Petal Dance, which can have him almost permanent uptime on his Petal Dance. Very very strong Pokemon right now. Bigly tough, still just average I would say. And it's annoying Pokemon. It's good, but it lost a lot of power. And I think the emblems also don't really help Bigly Tough too much when it comes to certain things. Yeah, it's just very mediocre, I would say. Zaora in lane, I think, is up to back up to B plus tier. I'm not the biggest fan of playing Zaora in lane because it can backfire very hard. But as soon as you know, he has pretty good early game. A lot of people underestimate how much damage this Pokemon does in early game. So I think it for sure has a place. I mean, this looks kind of weird, but you know what? It's my tier list. You know, if someone wants to complain about it, I'm not gonna say who. Uh, feel free to, you know, it's it's, it's difficult. Teal is always difficult to make, right? You have Decidueye. I'm going to put into B plus tiers. Uh, I mean, I actually don't think lane Decidueye is all too bad. Um, I think it's totally fine. He did get a, I mean, he got a change, right? He has a bit more faster cooldown now on his Spirit Checker, but he has one less charge. So it's kind of like a good and bad thing at the same time. Um, for sure we had nerves, but actually, I mean, I think BT is fair, right? 
I think B tier. I think, you know what, I'd rather have still these Pokemon in my lane than a Decidua, even though when he gets to level 7, he turns very strong. Serena, I, I think Serena is so strong. Like, to me, this Pokemon is absolutely broken. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to put it into S tier. Maybe a bit too high, maybe it deserves A plus tier more, but I think this Pokemon is absolutely broken. Dragon Knight, absolutely hate lane Dragon Knights. I think it's beyond wasted of a pick to pick it in lane. And I feel like whenever I have a lane Dragon Knight, he does absolutely nothing, because it's difficult. You do nothing on lane Dragon Knight. Getting to level 8 takes a long time. It can work, but never, it never feels like, wow, this guy did a lot, right? To me, at least. Never like, wow, this was strong. This felt difficult to play against. Never. Never feel that way. Trevenant, A+. Plus. Yeah, I think A+, plus for Trevenant is pretty solid. One of the probably one of the top defenders right now still. Um, yeah, just very solid Pokemon. We have Aegislash. I think Aegislash is A right now, even though I think another Pokemon where crit chance emblems are going to be massive. Of course, Aegislash will have... an Aegislash crits on his boosted auto attack. His damage is absolutely absurd, right? So if we combine the scope, Razor Claw, uh, crit rate emblems, this Pokemon could get a lot of power from those things. Super, still easily S tier. This Pokemon is broken. It's going to stay broken. Then we have Flash Cannon Draladon, because it's lane. I would prefer playing Flash can draw it on lane. I think it's also solid A tier. Um, I tried it earlier. The attack speed emblems actually don't work on his flash cannon. He doesn't gain a single more boosted auto attack or auto attack during flash cannon. So I was a bit disappointed. Besides that, again, crit. Another crit Pokemon. You will, you will stack 10% crit chance, but the attack speed is pretty nice if you play Dragon Pulse. I think attack speed is good. If you play flash cannon, attack speed is absolutely useless to take on red emblems or the emblems. Azumarill. It's getting stronger and stronger, but it's very hard to raid. Um, I think Azuma is absolutely annoying and does a lot of damage as well. But certain times it also feels beyond useless, right? Like Azuma is very 50-50, so I'm going to put into a B-plus tier for now still. But I think this is a Pokemon that has potential to rise in the meta and in general. I think it's very, very mean of a Pokemon. And it shows a lot of potential. But I still don't think it's enough for me to put it into, you know, a higher tier. Espeon, I think Espeon has a chance to make something happen this patch. Do it to cooldown reduction as well. I will also have a video playing Espeon coming up with the cooldown em emblems, and I think it actually is quite nice. But again, it's still struggle. There's a lot of mobility in this game right now. A lot of mobility, and it's very difficult for Espeon to actually do something about it. It's very difficult Pokemon to play. It's very hard to hit your moves late game. It's, it's just very difficult to play, and for that it still doesn't do too much, but I think it has potential as well. For sure it has potential, and I think it can also be someone that can be high in the future. Maybe I'm also over underestimating it a bit, but for now I still don't really see, you know, the carry potential in this Pokemon. But again, it's just a, it's kind of like a supportive DPS there. Dead Fox, I think easily A plus tier in lane. S tier might be a bit too high for lane, but A plus tier totally reasonable, I think. I think that's what we can agree on. Fire Spin super super broken still and landing phase is not too bad it can be quite difficult because you need you know mystic fire on level six which can take a while but as soon as you get to level seven you turn into a monster and then we have glaceon i think glaceon is hard to rank i, I really thought that glaceon is super bad in lane but I'm often surprised by it like it actually does quite decent in lane um depending it's just the first ev is so bad right the first ev is absolutely terrible if you get to level six you get quite strong so i'm gonna put into 80 for now I think it does have potential. I'm going to also start playing some lane Glaceon for you guys to showcase it. Um, and maybe I'm wrong or right on this. I still have to test a bit more. But yeah, it's just it has the worst early game EV out of all EVs. It's the worst one. So it has no burst damage. It has no last hitting potential. It has very low damage. So but if you get to level four, it becomes quite strong. Um, last hitting is OK with it. Ice Shackle again has like, you know, these instances of damage, so it's not like an instant burst as well, but it can clear stuff quite fast. And as soon as you get to level six, you can actually start, you know, killing your opponents pretty, pretty on cooldown. So I think A tier. I'm going to start testing a bit more and then I'm going to, of course, let you guys know. That's the lane tier list for now. And I'm going to head into the jungle tier list next. So I think this will be actually very difficult because I feel like there's six or seven ST junglers. So... I really don't know how to rank them. I'm just going to put them into what I think they are for now and then later maybe rearrange them a bit into something that maybe looks a bit better because I think it's very difficult. Already starting with the first one, I think Venusaur could easily be up here. It's just like, as soon as you pick something in jungle, it can carry a match, right? So I'm going to have to like pick them by how much I think their power differential is. So Venusaur, I think, is I'm going to put an 8 here for now. Um, 
very strong jungler as well again with petty dance also with the equilibrium reduction you know emblems and maybe energy amplifier can have almost permanent petty dance uptime i would still not play shell bell but i think energy amp and seven black emblems is totally fine serena is also very strong in jungle a plus i think this pokemon again is broken doesn't matter where it's played so absolute hard to deal with and in jungle it just gets to level six very fast only problem is that it doesn't get attack weight stacks as fast right but champ is also someone that can jungle very strongly um b plus again b plus doesn't even mean like b plus in jungling doesn't even mean it's like a bad jungler right so this is like where it's already starting to be like yeah um it can work but it can easily be here as well like you, you're gonna carry games as much champ jungle right just as much as you maybe with others so very difficult uh, lucario jungle i'm not a big fan on big fan of but uh yeah b tier i think is totally fine for that as well Dead Fox, I think, is absolutely S tier right now, especially with the cooldown reduction build. This Pokemon is absolutely busted and very, very strong. Cramorant as well. Like, Cramorant is so strong. It's, like, so difficult to put them, though, into here. Because I also want to put Cramorant to S tier, but it's going to be so many Pokemon to S tier. But, I mean, they're all strong, right? They're all insanely, insanely strong. Maybe I need, like, an S tier, A++ tier, or S minus tier, actually. What if I do an S minus tier? Honestly, that could work as well, right? for junglers but then we have like a minus a plus a b plus and the c tier maybe that is fine i mean you know that could maybe work right maybe you guys let me know again this is this one is very difficult i feel for me to judge i'm gonna make this a bit bigger um so i'm gonna put them all a bit down so we have it like this and i think that might actually look already better jungling yeah. They have to know the jungle rule, guys. <laughs> they have to know the jungle rule. All these Pokemon can just win games like it's nothing. Dralodon, solid A plus Pokemon as well, still with Dragon Pulse. Um, again, with Dragon Pulse, I think attack speed runes are very good. Also, crit chance runes or emblems. I keep saying runes because of League of Legends, but they obviously have to start saying emblems. Very important to have the right terminology <laughs> going, right? So. Again, I'm not going to put non junglers into here as well. Like something like Mammoth Swine, I'm just not going to put into this ranking at all. Next up, we have who else do we have? Gengar. Gengar I'm also going to put into S minus. Um, I think, I mean, very strong jungle as well. But I think Dale Fox and Dragon Knight, which is my other S tier plus, are just a tiny bit better. I think those two Pokemon are currently the best junglers. And after that, it's quite, quite, you know, it's still very close. Again, all of these Pokemon are insane. Then we have who else do we have? Sylveon with Mystic Fire, Ken Jungle. It is reasonable, but nothing you should, I would necessarily recommend. Charizard is also still pretty strong. I'm just going to put him into solid A tier. Who else do we have? Decidua, I think, is very good as well right now. Still. Um, and there's a lot of less dive in this match game now, so his spirit checker gets quite a lot of value. And I think he's also probably pretty good with, you know, seven black emblems for even more spirit checkers. Besides that, of course, I wouldn't play Shelby. Energy Amp, you could consider. And I might try that, you know, like a yeah, yeah, tech weight, energy amplifier. And Massive Band, Decidui with, you know, seven black emblems. Could honestly be, it sounds quite good. That's something I for sure want to give it a try as well. Talon Flame. Uh, it's just a bit behind the other junglers right now. I don't think he's too bad, but he does need a bit more. But I think eight is still fair. I think Fly Flame Charge is not too bad. It's quite annoying and uh, hard to deal with follow of Pokemon as well still. Zaora is back to being a super good Pokemon. Easily as minus for me. Very, very strong Pokemon of the level nine Unite. And we already see a lot of his arrows in my games. And his early game damage is very good when he gets to charge on level 8. Or wild charge, doesn't matter what. It's just this level 9 Unite just makes him a good jungler again. Because now he can actually fight for the first Dread now. Which he didn't used to be, right? He used to be like, yeah, I'm level 9 at Dread. But I don't have Unite. So he often lost to the other Unite. But uh, all other jungler having Unite buff. Or Unite move up. So now he doesn't. Right? And very, very good. Uh, makes him obviously a much, much better Pokemon Blastoise. Used to be pretty good in jungle, but right now he lost a lot of damage, so I really wouldn't recommend playing this necessarily. Nine Tails jungle is something people like playing. It's for sure something you can maybe do, but nothing too crazy either. Next up, we have Absol. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I would I would pick any other jungle over Absol right now in jungle. It just lost a lot of power, and it's just frustrating to play Absol right now until they fix the Night Slash bug. Espion, also going to put down up here. I think it can jungle, but it just needs a bit more. And again, CT doesn't mean these Pokemon don't work either. Like, again, jungle is such a strong wall, it works totally fine. Greninja, easily as minus. Also somewhere in the S tier. 
and then Cinderace joins Greninja as well as, you know, the classic duo. I feel like they're always next to each other, doesn't matter where, doesn't matter what meta. Cinderace, Greninja, always best friends, especially when it comes also to Griefers and AFKs, right? In your teams, it's always Cinderace or Greninja, so, you know? And um, then we have Glaceon, which I think is absolutely insane. But I'm also going to put into high S minus tier. This Pokemon is very, very strong. Would absolutely recommend when it comes out for, you know, or when you get, guys get this Pokemon to play it in jungle. Very, very good. Absolutely does a crazy amount of damage. Egg Slash, I think, is a solid A tier right now in jungle. I think I just prefer a bit of few other junglers, you know, over the things that are, you know. I just prefer these junglers over Egg Slash. Gotta say it. Um, then we have Gardevoir, which I think is okay. Again, Psyshock as well with emblems is quite decent. You can have no like permanent Psyshock, I think, which is not too bad, but nothing too crazy either. Garchomp, solid B plus tier. Um, the, the thing that makes it maybe a good jungler is that he gets Dragon Rush on level 5, which means that he can Dragon Rush Bees back into his teams on the first gank, which kind of can secure the Bees, which is, you know, quite good. But I still think the other junglers are just bet much better carries to win games with. And then you have which I think can jungle. Only problem is getting attack bait stacks is quite difficult. Actually, Machamp is like, Machamp has to be up here. This is just way too low for him. He's such a strong Pokemon, even in jungle as well. This Pokemon is just absolutely busted. Um, I just I just prefer having it in lane because you get your attack bait stacks a bit easier. And he's also a very, very strong laner. Crusted jungle. Not gonna lie, Crusted jungle is actually not too bad either. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna put it down with here. And I think that's it. I think that's it. It looks a bit wild, and I try to spread it out a bit more. But again, like all of these Pokemon right here, even an A plus can can be S tier or can just carry a match. All these ones in A plus tier can carry matches, and even these ones down here don't quite do it though. You know, these ones are like, yeah, you know, they're fine to pick in jungle, but are they gonna carry the match? Not necessarily. But all these up here can easily carry matches and have a huge impact. But that's just how I think it is. Hope you guys enjoyed this tier list. And I always appreciate if you guys like the video, subscribe to my channel. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.